Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today's pen you may recognize. It was lent to me by uh, one of my uh, fellow pen aficionados, and uh, it's not a pen that I would have I would buy for myself, and we'll explain that in a minute. So it's a Noodler's pen, and those of you that watch videos are probably well aware of what this is. It's uh, Nathan's Boston Safety Pen. And uh, he's labeled it in um, both the barrel and the cap. It's the classic uh, Noodler's clip. And, you know, I have Waterman Safety Pens and I think probably a few off-brands and I've tried my best to get them to be something I enjoy writing with and they turn out to not be so and this pen is not going to change that for me this ebonite is beautiful I mean I haven't really had an, an ebonite pen that feels this good for a long time kind of makes me reminisce about vintage ebonite hard rubber that I try to get it to feel this good you know cleaning it polishing it, waxing it, etc. But obviously this is something that's new. So when I first got this pen, I had trouble getting the nib to come out and I thought I was doing something wrong and then I watched a few more instructional videos. So the key thing is, is this sleeve here unscrews from the back cap. So if you just turn this, nothing happens. And that's what concerned me when I first got the pen. But the trick is, is just you have to hold the bottom cap here and just turn it a little bit, turn and push, and it comes out. You know, pulls in and out. And it just kind of is a little sticky, which is what you want because of those seals in there. And I've cleaned the ink out of this because I was concerned when I had my trouble with running it, so, or using it. I don't know whether anybody's talked about posting it, but, you know, you can post it on that cap but it makes for a, a freakishly long pen and when you uh, put the nib out it's not quite as long because you've now pushed things out about an inch or so but that's the pen it's a, a noodlers has a noodlers flex nib on it so those of you that are written with those this is going to be similar so the, the challenge I have is number one I have no desire to use India ink or any ink that doesn't work in a fountain pen in a fountain pen. If I was to do that, I would get a dip pen uh, and use it that way. I mean, it's not a pen I need to carry around with me, which is, you know, part of the reason of having a fountain pen is the portability nature of it. And this is complexity. I know Nathan made this to be easily repaired as he does with all of his pens, and I appreciate that. And I know he's uh, a real truest when it comes to pens and uh, inks so again this is something that i think is interesting to have available to to us in the pen community but not something that i would like to add to my collection oh, i appreciate that i was lent this just to to play around with it and it took me a while to feel comfortable with it and i'm still not comfortable with it and when you give this to people i think the best thing to do is to always uncap it because if people uncap it this way ink pours out and it's probably not going to be a pleasant situation so give it to them this way extract the nib and then they can write with it and then hopefully they give it back to you and they don't try to to do anything like i say it is pretty stiff that movement is something you need to do deliberately i've used this book before as a reference i think it's good and they have a couple pages on uh, safety pens so you can see the different designs and the model numbers beneath them be interesting to have a ripple version but I don't they made them in various sizes and as usual with Waterman they had a incredible number of models for each of their types of pens different clips different uh, metal trim different colored uh, hard rubbers so and they made them small. So some of you may not be aware of the 
initial vintage uh, safety pens. Uh, here's three examples from uh, Waterman. Two small kind of, uh, you would call them lady pocket pens or purse pens or it could be hanging around the neck with the little loop on top and then this one here which is a little bit bigger size, you know, shows some oxidation. On the back uh, they generally would have a, a numerical indication but this one uh, if it's there it's hardly visible I'll have to try to get that out but the cap unscrews and the same type of threading that's uh, used on Nathan safety pen but here it's just this little knob that you turn clockwise to extend the nib and there's some engraving on here but it's uh, more uh, visible on the uh, other pens so they also did a lot of ornate uh, overlay. This is a gold filled overlay. This pen is probably from the early 1900s. There's no markings on the metal, but I've never done anything to clean this up. So it's been this way since I've had it for many, many years. And you can barely make out the 0542 one half V on the back. It looks like these pens have been worked on a lot and that's one of the challenges with these types of safety pens is there's a fairly intricate mechanism, a uh, number of um, pieces that kind of interact, kind of like a spiral design. Um, I'll show you some examples of that, but they tend to wear, the seals go out so they need to be taken apart to to clean them. And this one is in pretty good condition and you can see the uh, a nice engraving on it and of course safety pen so the latest patent date here is 1903 so this probably you know 1906 07 you know uh, probably before 1910 was this pen was made and it has a, a much clearer marking on the uh, back so this pen probably was not used problem is that the, the cap was cracked, but it's in almost mint condition, but it doesn't feel the same as the ebonite that is in the safety pen, uh, so maybe the composition has changed, the chemistry has changed, the polishing methods have changed, but thought you might like that little historical uh, look. I always like comparing uh, catalogs that may have vintage pens in that I happen to have. So here's one I found that matched up pretty much exactly. You may notice that the safety pen's a little bit shinier. I just did a light buff on it and a little bit of wax. And the other thing to note is the exact model number is shown here. 542 and a half V. And with the ring, the price was $9.50 in 1918. So you may ask what that's equivalent to in 2017 dollars, 158 dollars. So when we talk about the price of modern fountain pens, we can't lose sight of what pens cost back in the early part of the century, last century, that, you know, people who bought these pens really made an investment in their pens. So the pen that I disassembled is a safety type vest length. And it's illustrated here on the left. And as we come down, it's a 42 and a half V. And it was $3. So the $3 in 1918 is the equivalent to $50 today. So figure this pen was the equivalent of uh, buying like a Twisby 580 pen today. So one of the design features of the vintage is when you unscrewed the cap, they posted nicely and they posted on that ring so you could use that cap to extend the nib and retract it. So that's uh, one aspect of this design that I think is quite nice that uh, was not replicated uh, in the push-pull system that uh, Nathan did in his Boston safety pen. I love YouTube. I um, am uh, very appreciative that I'm able to contribute and that uh, a number of viewers find my videos useful. So 
I did some research on disassembling the uh, Waterman safety pen and I'd never taken one apart before. So this section which has that turning knob in unscrews from the barrel. I used my rubber lobster bands and um, after a little bit of effort it took a little bit of, of force to get it but once it broke loose it came out relatively easily. And you can see how this turning knob turns independent of the outer knob which is attached to the barrel and that's how you extend on this spiral the nib. There's some seals inside of here. I'll take a look at this, clean everything up. This pen doesn't appear to have been used much. I expected to find more dried ink inside of here, but I didn't. But you know, one of the things that this exemplifies is this is a fairly complicated mechanism, fairly uh, prone to damage. Um, I'm amazed this one is as good a shape as it is, but uh, you know, these vintage pens were made to last for a while, you know, back in the days when things were made to last and we weren't in a disposable society. And that little pin just fell out. So something you need to be aware of if you decide to take yours apart. So there's a lot of other videos on this pen about, you know, how it's made. Nathan has done a bunch of them and, and other people have. So I just wanted to add my comments and opinions uh, as someone who has, you know, used safety pens in the past before Nathan came out with this one. And, and it's just not the pen for me. So um, if it's the pen for you, that's great. If I've helped influence your decision one way or the other, that's also good. So hopefully um, you've enjoyed this short look at this pen. So some of you may ask, Chris, what would you rate this pen as? And I'm going to have to say no rating. It's not a pen I can, I can do that evaluation with because it's just not something that I have that amount of interest in. So... Sorry for that, but um, I need to be honest and uh, just basically say uh, NA for the rating. I would suggest if you're interested, uh, find one that you can use first or go to a pen show and try one out. If you buy from one of the local retailers, um, if they have a good return policy, that also may be helpful. But uh, it is a unique pen and it is uh, part of history and part of a way of, of using inks that you may not want to put in a pen. So for now, thank you for watching. Uh, we have reached the end. I'm not going to write with it. There's nothing spectacular about the, the nib that we haven't all experienced on Ahab's or Conrad's or, or the other pens that have these types of uh, Noodler's uh, flex nibs on it. Or also uh, Fountain Pen Revolution has a nice flexible nib that works fairly well. So give it a shot. So hopefully you found uh, something that you love to write with and, and you enjoy writing and, and putting your thoughts on paper and sharing them with people or just reading them later for your own enjoyment. Until next time, bye.